Um, uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Mandana and uh, Vanha Menon, and this is Devashish Nandi. We're both documentary filmmakers. We're going to do like a quick introduction, uh, and then we'll take you through the screening and the community engagement uh, process that Sahana talked about. So, do you want to go first and introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, I'm Devashish Nandi, and uh, I'm from Assam only. I work as a filmmaker and photographer. And Morisika, which Sahana talked about, it's, a, it's my first uh, feature length documentary film, which I co directed. Um, I'm Anina Menon. Uh, I'm a documentary filmmaker and an interdisciplinary storyteller. So, essentially, apart from making documentary films, I have been for the past 15 years. Uh, hi, Chiku. I have been for the past 50 years. Uh, uh, 15 years. Uh, collaborating with software engineers, playwrights, um, uh, performance artists to sort of also create visual immersive experiences. So these are the two things I do. I met Debashish at the Shishti Institute of Art, Design and Technology, where I was faculty in a lab called Shishti Films, and he landed up there. And uh, we have been collaborating on films ever since. So to, uh, to just sort of give you an overview, one of the things that uh, while working in the field, both of us would constantly have conversations about community engagement, authorship, and uh, you know how to also have a more collaborative process, even in terms of the uh, production itself, as opposed to just limiting ourselves to community screenings at the end. So these were constant conversations that we were having when we were in the field, uh, working with rural and indigenous communities. Uh, and so Morisika, which is the feature length film and everything else that follows with it is a byproduct of all those conversations because once we had secured funding for Morisika, we decided to try and do things slightly differently. So we're going to start the presentation and uh, then we will screen the film and then, you know, we can take Q&A. Yeah. Share my screen. yeah. Can everybody see it? Yeah. No, no, not yet. No? Yeah, now we can. Okay. All right. So, uh, Morisika, the story of the boat, boatman, is what the feature length film is called. Uh, we are not going to share the feed, uh, screen the feature length film because that's 72 minutes long, but we do have one of the other um, episodic uh, films that we did along with the feature length film, which we'll screen for you. But just to quickly give you um, some context, uh, we had set out to make a feature length film on the Brahmaputra, which uh, for those of you who don't know, originates in Tibet and flows uh, eastwards and then sort of takes a U-turn and then flows back down uh, into India through Arunachal and Assam. Uh, the floodplains are incredibly rich in uh, uh, wildlife and, uh, you know, plants and trees and forested areas and grasslands. Uh, they're rich in biodiversity. They are instrumental to livelihoods of riverine communities there. They are also instrumental to cultural and historical identities of these communities because a lot of them, uh, uh, you know, have their roots in migrating up and down this river. Um, climate change, deforestation, sand mining, uh, hydroelectric projects have all sort of dwindled this landscape. Uh, and along with it, a lot of the traditional knowledge systems and cultural practices are disappearing. So we set out to make this film. And during our Eki, uh, we were approached by members of uh, three different communities because Brahmaputra is vast. Uh, and they said, hey, we'd like to collaborate with you to make this film. So one uh, is, is was essentially a pastoralist from a cattle camp uh, of Buffalo, Buffalo Riding Pastoralist, which is at the Arunachal and Assam border, flanked by the Deban, the Siang, and the Luit, uh, and uh, while they enter Assam to form the Brahmaputra further down. There was Kolibari Fishing Village, which is bang in the middle in Tezpur. Um, and Tezpur town essentially sort of cropped up around that fishing village in, uh, in the early 19th century. Then there, we also for, collaborated with the Barua family, who are the founders of Gaudipur, which is on the uh, banks of the Gadhada River, which meets the Brahmaputra and then flows into Bangladesh before emptying out into the Bay of Bengal. So these are the three communities that we collaborated with. Um, so this is Morisika, the feature-length film. 
uh, which is a 72 minute long film. You can all watch this because we've actually made it to the official selection of all deaf. So you can all watch it online in December or if they're physical, December 1st week and it, it, physical screenings are also happening. So we'll have that up on our social media and stuff like that. Apart from that, that, the other thing we sort of realized while making the film is that which uh, most of your filmmakers in this group will realize that there is a, there are a lot of rushes, uh, footage stuff that just sort of gets left behind, you know. So we also decided that we will make three episodes dedicated to each of the communities because anyway we are cutting rushes, so it's not additional work in that sense, and give it back to the communities apart from the feature length film. Uh, this also sort of adds context to each community and their place in the film because the feature length film also has, it's a collaborative process, but it also has our creative vision attached to it. This was purely just for the community. So there are three, in this case, there are three episodic films because there are three communities. I'll let Devishis take it. Uh, like Vandana said, uh, we documented three places. One is Proyak, we call in Assamese. Uh, which is in the Then the second one is transition, which is in a fishing village, uh, as she mentioned. And we will be screening this film, transition, which is based, uh, which is set in Tejpur, and the other one, tradition, which documents the uh, relationship and cultural practices uh, connected to the Brahmaputra River, which is based in Gauripur near Bangladesh border. So, yeah, shall I just yeah. play the film. Transition. So we'll play the transition uh, episode for you. It's close to 13 minutes long, so you can watch that and then come back and we can have a brief discussion about it and then we'll take you to the uh, community outreach uh, process. Yeah. So just hang on one sec. Just let us know if you can hear it and see it. এই কলিবাড়ি জাগাটোর নাম মানে জিমান লেকে আমি জানো ইয়াতে এগোরা কি বয়োজ্যেষ্ঠ বুড়ি আয় আছিল তেখেতে তেখেতর বেশ বয়ো হয়েছিল আর তেখেতে মাস বিক্রি করে ফুরিছিল আর মাস বিক্রি করতে তেখেতর নাম আছিল কলিবাই তেখেতর নাম আছিল কলিবাই আর সেই নামটোর ভিত্তিতে পাচলে মানে গোটে অঞ্চল তো কলিবাড়ি বলে জনাজাতা হল আমার কারণে মানে নদী কেবল এখন নদী নহয় এখন মানে আমার কারণে নিজের অস্তিত্ব থাকা পরিচয় মানে আমি নিজকে মানে লুইট পড়িয়া বলে আমি কবলে গৌরব করি কারণ এই নদীখানে আমার জীবন আর বিশেষক আমার তো এই অঞ্চল তো গোটে মাছমরিয়া সকল মাছমরিয়াই আর সেই হিসাবত আমার কারণে নদীর মর্যাদাটা বেলেগ হয় যখন সদায় নদীর ওসরতে ডর দীঘল হওয়া কারণে নদী অত্যন্ত প্রিয়
পঞ্চাশ বছরের আগত দেখা ব্রহ্মপুত্রখন আর বর্তমান বাইশত দেখা ব্রহ্মপুত্রখন এটা ব্রহ্মপুত্রখন এখন গামোচা যেন হল তেতিয়া কিন্তু এখন চেলেঙর নিচিনা আসিল সেই সময় মনে কো যে ব্রহ্মপুত্রখন ইমান বিখাল আছিল মানে এখন নাও লো ইটুপারপা সিটুপারে যাও যাওতে মানে তিন ঘন্টা চারি ঘন্টা সময় লোক কিন্তু এটা ব্রহ্মপুত্রখন মানে সাঁতুরি পার হবা বা খোজকাড়ি পার হবা অবস্থা গতি সেটা অনুমান করবেন ব্রহ্মপুত্রখন কি সেই আজ পঞ্চাশ বছর আগত ব্রহ্মপুত্রখন এনেকা মাস নাই যদি মাস বিচারে পয়া না যায় আর এইখিনতে উল্লেখ করা ভাল সেই সময়স আমার প্রয়াত গঙ্গারাম দাসদেবর মহল আছে তখেই পরিচালনা করে আসিল দেউতার তো কবল কাহিনী তো বহুতে আছে কিন্তু এটা আরম্ভ করলে হয়তো অন্তই নহব দেউতা মো নিজেই এজন মাছমরিয়া আছিল তখেতর ভাবধারা বহুত বেলেগ আছিল তখেতে সদায় আগুয়াই যাব বিচার আর নিজেই এজন মানে খেলার প্রতি খুবই ইচ্ছুক আছিল যো খেলত মানে ভাগ লয় আর বেলেগ খেলা তো খুব বিচার খুব ভাল খেলুয়ে আছিল তখেতে ভাল ক্রিকেট খেলেছিল বেশিক ভাল ফুটবল খেলেছিল আর খেলা দেখি ইয়াত পি ডি স্ট্রেসি নামে এজন ডি এফ ও আসে তোমার মানে কাম বন একু নাই খালি হেরি খেলা ধুলাই করে ফুরে এদিন ক্রিকেট খেলা হয়েছিল ক্রিকেট খেলা পি ডি স্ট্রেসি গেছিল চাবলে আগতে সাহাবিল কথা খেলা হয় পি ডি স্ট্রেসি এম মানে খেলা দেখি মাতি আনলে ওসরলে কি করা কি নক সুদিলে খেলি ভাল পাওয়া ইয়ে সুদিলে তারপর মানে কলে কাম করবা বোলে করিম পিছদিন গেছে আর লগে খেলার মহলর একটা পারমিট দিছে সেই আরম্ভ পিডি স্ট্রেসিয়ে আরম্ভ করেছে ভাল রাস্তা দেখাবল ভাল মানুষ হবলে জড়িয়তে ডর মানুষ হল নাচ গান আর অভিনয় মানে খুব ভাল পাইছিল সরুপা মূর যে পরিবেশ নগাঁত আসলে সেই পরিবেশ ইয়াত একবারে চেঞ্জ হয়ে গেল নাইনটিন সিক্সটি সেভেন বারো জুলাই তারপর আমার এনেকা তো হয়ে গেল পানি ধান ওসরা হয়ে গেল মানে লড়া ছোটির সামনে ঘর সংখ্যার সামনে আমার ছটা মানুষ কোনো নাই সবতক মানে ধন্যবাদ দিব লাগবে হরি বড়া নামের এগারণ ডর কেরানি আসে বড় কেরানি আমার তেই আমার সব সম্ভার আসে যেতে মানে ফিসারি চলাইছিল স্টাফখিন আসিল না মূর সিহতে সব চলাইছিল স্টাফবিল গুছি যা নাছিলে ঢুকার পিছত মূর থাকিল আমার দেউতায় যে মাছ মহল চলাইছিল লিজত লোল সরকার সরকারের একটা পর্সেন যুন শিলঘাটের পর ধনশ্রী মুখলে কি মাছ আসিল মানে বুঝাব নয় আর মাছর সাইজও বহুত ডর আসিল মানে 
এনেকা নহয় কি যে সিজনত মানুহে পালে বা না পালে মানে মাছৰ মানে উভয় নদী আছিল গুটি নয়খন কলিবাৰী খনত যথেষ্ট পৰিবৰ্তন হ'ল এতিয়া এটা সময়ত সকলো ৰাইজেই মাছ মাৰিছিল তেনেকে জীৱিকা কটাইছিল কিন্তু ক্ৰমে নদীখনৰ পৰিবৰ্তন লৈ এনেকুৱা হ'ল কি যে নৈখনত মাছ কমি আহিলে আৰু সেয়া জীৱিকাৰে এখন এখন ঘৰ নচলা হ'ল যিহেতুকে নৈখনে আমাক জীৱিকাটো দিয়ে আৰু নৈখনে ইচ্ছা কৰিলেতো সব লৈ যাব পাৰে কিন্তু নৈখনে যেনেকে দিছে তেনেকে লৈছেও কিন্তু নৈখনে মানুহৰ মানে জীৱনৰ সূত্ৰ হয় সেইকাৰণে মানে বিশেষকে নৈ পৰিয়া মানুহে এই ব্ৰহ্মপুত্ৰখনৰ প্ৰতি এটা বেলেগ আদৰ আৰু সন্মান আছে এই ব্ৰহ্মপুত্ৰৰ বুকুত বহুত বহুত বস্তু আছে যাৰ দ্বাৰা বহুত জাতি মানে জীয়াই আছে ইয়াত এই নৈখনৰ বুকুত খৰি মাছ কাঠ বা ঘাঁহ বননি জীৱ জন্তুকে ইত্যাদি কৰি বহুত দেখা যায় গতি মই জানো যে ব্ৰহ্মপুত্ৰখন যদি আজি নাথাকিলহেঁতেন হয়তো অসমৰ মানুহখিনি অবস্থা বহুত বেয়া হ'লহেঁতেন আৰু দ্বিতীয়তে বিশেষকৈ এই কৈবত সম্প্ৰদায় আছে এছ চি সম্প্ৰদায়ৰ লোকসকল বিলুপ্ত হৈ গ'লহেঁতেন কাৰণ এই নৈ বুকুতে নাতৰি নাদৰি সাদৰি ইয়াতেই ডাঙৰ দীঘল হৈ ইয়াতেই মাছ মাৰিছে ইয়াতেই খাইছে ইয়াতে বেয়া বাণিজ্য কৰিছে ই এটা স্থল ব্ৰহ্মপুত্ৰখন আমাৰ এটা জাতিৰ স্থল গতি ব্ৰহ্মপুত্ৰক মই পিতৃ মাতৃস্বৰূপ বুলি মই ভাবোঁ অ' নাজাবি সন্ধিয়া ঐ নাৱৰিয়া নাও তো পাৰলৈ বা কিলে বৰফুনে সন্ধিয়া আহিছে কপি উঠে মোৰ গাওৰিয়া নাও তো পাৰলৈ বা নাও তো পাৰলৈ বা হয়তো মোৰ সৌভাগ্য কি যে মই আজি এই নৈ পাৰতে মই জন্মগ্ৰহণ কৰি ইয়াতে জীৱন যাপন কৰি আছোঁ যদিও মোৰ কাম আৰু মোৰ সকলো কৰ্ম বেলেগ ক্ষেত্ৰত আছে কিন্তু নদীখন মোৰ কাৰণে সদায় প্ৰিয়
Yeah. Um, Sahana, do you think we should take Q&A now to, or should we just keep everything for later? Or what would you suggest? You could ask for reactions or if there's anything yeah. to share. Okay. All right. If um, there are any reactions or any questions that anybody has, then we'll spend a little bit of time for the episode per se, and then we'll move on. So if anybody has anything. Uh, thank you so much for the film. My name is Sudhanva. Uh, I work at the Indian Institute for Human Settlements. Um, my question is, uh, I, I love the narrative. Um, um, there are two questions, actually. One is, uh, when you shot these interviews, uh, the camera seemed like it was uh, incidental and it was in the room sort of watching this interview happening. Or I don't even know if it was an interview. It seemed like a narration from there end. Um, could you tell us why that was and what the thinking was? Yeah. Um, uh, essentially, so because it was a feature length film, we spent about a year and a half with these communities. Um, we were documenting the Brahmaputra seasonally because the river has sort of massive seasonal shifts, even in terms of the landscape, even in terms of the livelihoods. Um, what a fishing village does in different seasons, like all these are dictated by the river. Um, so we ended up spending, and we had uh, we had been very clear that we would uh, spend as much time as possible with the communities, talking to them, uh, having multiple conversations, staying with them so that the experience is A, truly immersive for us, uh, because it's also running catch up, right? Because there's all this loads of centuries of traditional knowledge, you know, they know the river inside out. So even our questions sometimes seemed uh, naive uh, because, you know, they also have to then sort of make it really basic and explain it. So we ended up spending a lot of time with the communities. Morisika, essentially, what we had set out to do was it would cover the universal themes of loss of identity, loss of self, uh, hope, resilience, uh, and, you know, how the river has shifted. So that is the essentially the feature length film, which is why there's a lot of play on memory which is why even in the interviews that made it into the episodes, there are a lot of sort of, uh, you know, remembering that happens. The other thing we were really clear about, which we'll also get into in terms of when we were doing the production for the film, is that they are perfectly capable of telling their own stories. Right? Um, they have their own voices and who mm -hmm. better tell their stories than, than them. So, like you said, the camera was incidental. And because we spent so much time with them, they got so comfortable that we didn't need to do interviews. We could just sit and hang out and have a conversation. And, you know, they'd pull out photographs and then tell us. And we were filming all of this. And, uh, yeah. And talk about Jeevda, how he had conversations over there. Yeah, so uh, Jeevda, who is uh, the gentleman uh, who talks about his father and his mother. So they, his father was sort of instrumental in bringing the fishing village together for the longest time. Uh, Jeevda has also spent pretty much his entire life uh, trying to protect the legacy of his father. So he has all these uh, photographs and stuff like that. He felt really deeply towards the end of it. Uh, he really felt deeply towards his project because he sort of understood what we were doing with it. So he kind of went around and, you know, sort of spoke. He interviewed the he other interviewed people in the, the village. People. We didn't. He sat down and had conversations with them, which was great because you know, so then you're triggering memories that we can't even begin to sort of uh, ask questions. Yeah, yeah. About. So then it becomes more of a conversation. Like the Bishwar, the other gentleman in the yellow sheet, uh, shirt, he's an elder of the village, a uh, retired fisherman. Um, so that interview is actually not us. It's Jiza talking to him. The camera, like you said, happens to be incidental. It's essentially so that they can do it in their own voices. So the question's also there, it's not us. Wow, that's that's amazing. And I, and I love it. And... Uh... For a moment, because we're so used to seeing uh, the the perspective where one the camera is over the interviewer's shoulder or something like that, it is so uh, it, it was different for me and refreshing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much again. Um, Rajni, you can see the whole film uh, at <laughs> all depth screening <laughs> because it's a seventy-two minute long film. Fortunately or unfortunately. Uh, any other questions or should we just move on to the uh, presentation and look at how we did the production?
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so then we'll just um, walk you through the outreach and the production of the film, um, and then we'll take a uh, uh, Q&A. Sorry, just give give me a couple of minutes and just check for that. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Not <laughs> sure what happened. Everything just kind of uh, shut down. So uh, we'll start the presentation now. Yeah. Yeah, can everybody see? It's a blank screen, but you can start uh, while, now, while the screen comes up. Okay. Um, so uh, essentially, in terms of community outreach, uh, uh, there were sort of very specific things that we wanted to do. But uh, like I had just talked right after the uh, screening, that uh, the idea was to also engage them during the production of the film. Uh, because we were very uh, particular that uh, co-authorship uh, they tell their stories in their own voices, so they kind of dictate the narrative arc of the film in certain ways, uh, was th were things that we really wanted to do. Uh, in terms of, you guys can see the screen now, right? Yeah, okay. So in terms of the community uh, engagement thing that we uh, approached Nirkani uh, Philanthropies for was the community screenings, uh, which were an element uh, of the um, engagement. So we wanted to screen it in all the three places that we filmed in. Apart from that, we wanted to create an online interactive archive, essentially, uh, from uh, all the leftover rushes, footage, sounds, stories that didn't make it into the film. At that point, it was essentially limited to the film, uh, to Morisika in specific, uh, to give it, be able to give it back to them. Because more often than not, and again, like a lot of filmmakers in this group will be aware, there's a lot of stuff that gets left behind. But there is no reason why it can't be given back to the community. So we wanted to make an online interactive archive uh, for the community, obviously for a global audience as well, but also specifically for the community, which would uh, house all of this, uh, which in turn then gave us the impetus to say, go locally to places and say, hey, we have this interactive archive. Would you want to install it in your museum space, uh, in your community libraries, in, uh, in uh, you know, your, in the forest department area? Would you want to install it? So then, you know, we're paying for the tablet, we're paying for the design, you just need to install it. So that there's football and people can actually engage with the archive apart from the communities, but locally. 
where there is no, you know, going to a website, how do you publicize going to a website, you know, it then sort of limits the scope to the reach. Uh, but you put them in museums and installation sites across uh, Assam, and then obviously then the reach increases. Uh, so these were the three things that we approached uh, Nilkani Philanthropies for. During the production, there were a few things that we were really mindful of, and they actually happened very organically. We didn't go in saying that this is how the film is going to be made. We had a narrative arc that we wanted to follow in the sense that, like I said, they, they were looking at uni certain universal themes. Uh, but in terms of what the script would be or how it would flow happened organically through the course of the production. One of the things that ended up happening is Dimesh Radha, who's the gentleman uh, in the half jacket. He is also in the Tezpur episode. Uh, he turns out to have a hell of a voice. And when he had gone to interview with him, interview with him with Jida to find out about the river, we heard his voice and we said, hey, we're looking for the voice of, a, of the Brahmaputra, which needs to be an elderly, powerful voice. He is also a trained actor and director. Um, he, uh, he's he been creating Bhavnas, which is like a local Assamese uh, form of theatre, which is also slowly, slowly going extinct. Uh, so he's trained in sort of giving voiceovers and, you know, doing the whole, but it's all over the top. But then we said, oh, okay, we can work with this because he already knows how to work a script. So he we asked him whether he'd do the voiceover for the Brahmaputra. Um, Anup Das, uh, who's the other gentleman, is actually Mohanda's son. Mohanda is the one in the cow cow cowboy hat, who's again a village elder and a fisherman who's retired. The son um, actually doesn't do fishing, but because of his father's involvement in the whole process and all of it, he he was up for recording the voiceover of the boatman. He voluntarily approached us because we want to we wanted to take Mohanda's voice for the boatman. And he said he will be happy to give the boatman's voice because Mohanda had some problems with uh, his reading. Health, reading his health. He just suffered a stroke during the pandemic. So he, he's been a little under the weather. So initially we wanted Mohanda to do it. And then the son said, hey, I'll do it for you. So he, they ended up recording the voiceovers. The script writer is the gentleman the sitting photo. in, it's the first photo, the gentleman sitting in the black t-shirt. He is from a Chorchapuri or a temporary sandbank uh, in the in the lower lower Assam area. He's also Green Up Alumni. Green Up, for those of you who don't know, uh, is this video documentation center based out of Tejpur who empower youth uh, to uh, to look at uh, conservation through filmmaking and cultural uh, archiving of Northeast India. And I am also an alumni of Green Up only. Yeah, so Mirza interned with us for his Green Up internship because he comes from a Riverine community and then we discovered that he's a fantastic writer. He's a poet and a writer. We needed someone who would do, uh, the voiceovers needed to be local. The script needed to be local, the overarching voiceover was Brahmaputra and the boatman. And we asked him, hey, can you write the script for us? And he said, yeah. So then uh, he wrote the script for us. Uh, the music is uh, uh, the music is actually a co-collaboration. Co so they're, they're friends of mine who are musicians who uh, compose the score and everything. But apart from that, Bablu Das and uh, Mayavi, who are musicians in Gauripur, uh, who passed down uh, the folk form of Golpuria Loko Geet uh, generationally, they were up for do recording music for us. So then the music thing got sorted out. <laughs> then apart from that, like I mentioned, Jida, and uh, a lot of the other people from our different communities were also interested in the archive. So they wanted to go interview other people to talk about the river because, oh, he knows better about this section of the river or, you know, he has a better story. So Jita spent a lot of time interviewing. The other interesting thing that happened is this gentleman who you see with uh, the camera, uh, he's uh, Dhan Bahadur. He actually now formed, is part of the core team, but he's a pastoralist. While we were filming, like there was a lot of engagement about how a film is made, being able to visualize it, because a lot of people don't understand the process of a film because, you know, they're used to YouTubes and TikTok videos and stuff like that. So we would constantly show them the footage, hang out with them. So, you know, when the buffaloes turned up, you know, uh, he'd stand there and look at the camera and see the buffaloes coming in. So by the end of the production, he started understanding lenses. He, underst he can't read or write. Uh, but he started understanding lenses, he started understanding how sound is recorded, um, uh, you know, how a story should be told, 
he started understanding editing. So that is the other thing that sort of happened through the course of the production because we would constantly share footage with everybody we were working with. Uh, so those are the three things. The other way, there was a question in the spreadsheet about how do you also sort of engage and share what you're doing through the course of the production. One of the things is the Instagram handle. If you scan that QR code, you can launch the page if you want to take a look at it. A lot of the younger generation from the families in Kolibari, uh, in Gauripur, are part of Instagram. So the one thing that we made sure is anything that we posted on Instagram over the course of the past year and a half, we tagged them on it. So they could go back and show it to the elders as well. So that was one. Um, the other thing that we also sort of did is for those who didn't have Instagram or don't have a phone or cannot, you know, are not uh, literate digitally, we would, whenever we cut rushes, made small videos, even if it was, say, it was the Gauripur thing, but, you know, people in Kuti don't have the Instagram handle, we would send that, send it to them over WhatsApp so that they could take a look at what the production so look like also. Yeah, and other places that we were filming and looked like because they all knew we were filming here, we were filming there, we were filming everywhere. So that was another way of sort of engaging with them. Whenever we can't rush it, we sent it back to them. It was not so much for their opinion in that sense. It was just to say, hey, this is what we do it. And so they look at it. And then the next time there was a phone conversation, you know, they'd say, oh, we saw this. So who is this? How is this instrument made? Et cetera, et cetera. So that is also one way of engaging. And Instagram is really powerful because the younger generation from most communities are on Instagram. Facebook, not so much as Instagram. So we just tagged everybody so that it would sort of go outwards. So these are also some of the examples of some of the community members who were... Yeah. who sort of reposted stuff. Ishita is part of the uh, uh, Barua extended family. She couldn't unfortunately be there for the screening, but she on her own voluntarily posted it and said, you know, whoever else is in Gauripur, please go watch it. So it also then sort of took a life of its own where they started resharing stuff. So that was Instagram. Um, screenings is the other thing that we uh, were really particular about. We did things slightly differently based on our experiences from past screenings. One of the things that firstly we did is we worked with the community members or the community elders to design the screenings so that they are specific to that community. So even in, in terms of where we would screen it, um, the one in the dark uh, where they all these kids sit on the extreme right side is where uh, it's at the Namghar in Kolibari village. The Namghar is essentially a congregation point for the village, for religious ceremonies, for meetings, etc. So it's like this sort of central place where everybody gravitates towards. So the elders all set it up and <laughs> designed the place and said, you know, you have it here so that everybody can come. And so, you know, there's already a sense of camaraderie and community because the Namgar already sort of generates that. So that's what happened in Kolebari. In Gauripur, we screened it at the Pratima Burwa Memorial, Memorial Hall, which is she was instrumental in taking Gualpuriya Lokugi, the folk music of Loa Assam, into the mainstream, well, the Assamese mainstream, so to speak. And she also happens to be uh, the sister of the gentleman that we were sort of collaborating with, Prabir Barwa. So they said, do it here. Again, it's the central part of Gauripur. Everybody sort of uh, conglomerates there. There's a nice symmetry to it because it's the memorial hall for Pratimaji. Um, most of the people, a lot of the people you sit, see sitting here are uh, the musicians, their extended family members, uh, the younger generation from Gauripur uh, who came for the screening. It was also raining. We did the screening for two days in Gauripur. In the Kuti, it was slightly more complicated because the cattle camp is uh, flanked by rivers on three sides. Uh, it is also a jungle so we couldn't have screenings in the traditional sense of the word so what we said is hey we'll give you phones with the film and the three episodes on it the other thing we did is we gave the three episodes to all the communities so that you know they could there was that transfer of knowledge system that took place because of that and you know people from the kuti would come back and say oh hey you know i saw this in that uh, episode and that made me feel really good and vice versa so Kuti, we gave them phones because that also meant utility because most of them don't have phones. So during, you know, a flood or an emergency, contacting uh, the village, which is across the river, sometimes becomes really, really hard. So phones also ensure utility um, access and uh, they also mean that then you can give them the films on something that they can keep. 
So that's yeah. how we did it in, in the other places. We give pen drives away. Uh, they had phones or uh, laptop or TV or something to play the film on. But in the kuti, it was a problematic, bit problematic. That's why we gave phone there so that they can store the film there in their phone only. Yeah. yeah. And in the other places, we gave back the episodes and the films on pen drives. We were really clear that the communities get the films and, and the episodes for free, irrespective of whatever distribution we do with the film later on. But we were really clear that this goes back to the community in that sense. We also engage. For example, Jeevda came for the screening at Green Hub. That's him standing there. Uh, uh, Second one on the bottom. Me. Uh, that's him standing there. And we got him to talk about the film. And whatever he wanted to say, he took most of the Q&A because there were questions about, uh, you know, what is happening with the water, what is happening with the biodiversity, et cetera, et cetera. So he fielded most of the questions and we spoke very little. So that was another thing that we sort of did in terms of the screenings where we took a back step and had them do the speaking and talking. And again, it wasn't scripted. They could talk about whatever they wanted to. So that was those were the screenings. Um, then the last thing was the archive. And that we decided, so this is the online ar archive. Devishi should walk you through it. We've already done a soft launch. We've sent back the archive to everybody um, who we worked with and collaborated with. We're doing a hard launch in Tezpur. Um, in the beginning of November at the Tezpur Museum and uh, at this other space that we're setting up uh, in Tezpur. So the archive is because we realized through the course of this entire process that it's a, a storytelling is a powerful tool, tool for knowledge, knowledge transfer in the Northeast because most stories, most traditional knowledge systems are passed down orally through stories. So that is something that most of the communities can relate to irrespective of whatever larger themes you're talking about. This kind of storytelling also ensures that the, uh, the co-creators are the community members themselves. So when Devishish walks you through the archive, you'll notice that we've given all of them credit. There are no credits that we have taken. Um, that in turn ensures agency validation. A lot of the production process, because there were so many conversations that were happening, um, eco theme, you know, problems such as ecological grief and all of that were tackled to a certain extent because we were talking about the trauma uh, that people are facing now in extreme conditions. We use different forms of technology. So the online archive is one way. We're doing an offloaded app for places that have uh, very little internet access and even for the museums so that one doesn't have to worry about how does internet work in these places. Um, we work very hard as an interface to make sure that digital literacy, gender, age barriers are somehow cut through. We um, And we are hoping that this sort of becomes a template that can be used for other parts of the country. And that's how the River Project is born. But that will come too soon. They will soon now walk screen. quickly through the archive. Share another screen. Stop share this. I think someone else is controlling the mouse. Um. Can everybody see? Yeah, okay, so that's the online archive. Like I said, it's had a soft launch. We're going to do like a full fledged thing with the Col uh, people from Kolibari in Tezpur um, to do like a hard launch. So Devishish, do you want to quickly walk yeah. through it? So this is the basic homepage and these are the places we worked in uh, last year. That's the island, Kolibari, the fishing village and Goripur, the Barwa family. And all of this has the episode that one of which you just saw, you all just saw was, okay. so you can go through the episodes here. Then apart from the episodes and the film, we categorize some uh, videos, stories, so, stories uh, that can be used as archive that talks about river, work, migration, dance and drama, different themes. So if you click it, while we were filming the debunk change, you can... Yeah, so for example, uh, in one of the... So everything that's written it is for actually the layperson. It's not for the uh, people from Assam because most of them know all of this. 
right? So uh, the archive is also multilingual. But for example, during one of the conversations we were happening and uh, we were having, and Dan Bahadur was recording his voiceover for the film. Uh, again, which he decided what he wanted to say for the film. There was this little bit about how the river had changed its course while we were filming. It never made it into the film in its entirety, but it tells, it maps uh, the shifting course of the river. So we use that to make a short film, which is about like a minute long, I think. Two minutes only. Two minutes long. And we put the th uh, his recording at the bottom of it. So that tells the oral history of that particular time in of that river, which is the Dibang. So uh, similarly, so for all the themes, we've sort of ha we have uh, small small videos which um, tell its own story essentially. Go to music. Yeah. And... Yeah. Yeah. So for example, music uh, because we started off recording for the film, but then it ended up being a three four hour long evening sitting by the river, and you know they were talking to us, they were telling us the history of uh, Gualpara folk music and all of that. Most of it didn't obviously make it into the film. Um, so we made it a series. So that was one music thing. Uh, Bablu Chandra Roy, while making the uh, Duitara, uh, because he makes his instruments by hand, one evening when we were hanging around, decided to sing completely impromptu while he was making the Duitara. We ended up filming it, so we put it in the archive. Um, again, because... and in everything, uh, as you notice, the vocals or the storytellers are the community members who have told us the story. Uh, there's no credit in that sense that we, because that also ensures authorship. So copyright in the case of this archive is uh, with the River Project, which essentially means it's with the community members because one of the things that we really grapple with is intellectual property rights. What happens when you're documenting traditional knowledge systems, someone is telling you a story, a piece of music, um, how does it work? Uh, and uh, one of the ways, we are still grappling with it, but one of the ways that seem to work for us and the community members right now is co-authorship, where they get due credit. And if there are any royalties or any, anything to be had, then or if that needs to be reproduced or reused, then they need to give us permission. So, yeah. And the whole website is multilingual. And for now, you can convert it to Assamese also. I just like to share another thing. This is our about page, which is translated by one of our collaborators' father. From the community. From, from the, the community. community. So that's another way. So it became like this huge collaborative process where the community members got involved, their fathers got involved, their relatives got involved, uh, and they wanted to also contribute to the making of this uh, website archive slash thing as well. Yeah. Share the presentation again. Yeah. So, um, so what happens now once the wait? You can see. Hmm. No. Yeah. Now we can. Okay. So, what happens once the website is ready? It's on the internet. Um, but how does it go down locally? So on the left, what you see is the Matyabad Palace, which is where the Barua family used to live. It got handed over to the Assam uh, Ministry of Cultural Affairs uh, on the 2nd of January of this year. They're in the middle of renovating it, uh, basically because it, it was getting too difficult for the family to keep it up and maintain it. And, you know, it's, it's a... It's a labyrinth of uh, old documents, um, photographs, etc. So now they want to convert it into a museum. So once they convert it into the museum, they've given us a certain space, once all the renovations are done, to host the archive in on a tablet. And the museum is going to be free. And you know anything that happens within that space, we design uh, and we figure out how to make it an immersive space for people to walk into. That's in Gauripur. In Tezpur, like I said, we're doing the hard launch at the Tezpur District Museum, uh, coupled with a, a heritage walk of the Brahmaputra. Uh, and uh, the tasteful one, again, the entry is free. Uh, the district museum head is a really nice guy, really, um, he's really invested in sort of uh, putting out the history of his people and of tasteful locally. So Kolibari will be sitting in there and uh, we have invited everybody from the community to come for the opening and then they can, uh, you know, take it from there and 
decide what to do with the museum space. So that is the idea uh, locally, what happens to this archive. Yeah, next. Okay, so through the course of that, the other thing that happened is um, collaborations and engagement increased. Um, there were small things that we did, transfer of knowledge. The photographs you see in the center is at the Kaziranga National Park. It's with the forest officials and the mahouts or the elephant keepers of Kaziranga. We took a really popular song in the Assamese imagination, which is called Hastir Kanya, which essentially talks about, uh, it's, it's, it's a lore about uh, a herd of elephants. It was and also used by the mahouts to tame the elephants. Yeah. The elephants. It was also. Oh, yeah. So um, we did a, Devishish took the song because they've all heard it. So he took the song there and uh, the old lady that you see sitting in the bottom photograph is Parvati Borwa, who incidentally happens to be from the Borwa family. And she used to be an elephant tamer and an elephant keeper back in her day. So uh, she was there and she commemorated it. And she was doing a training exercise for uh, uh, the Mahouts in Kadiranga. These are all Mahouts that come from uh, old families that have followed this sort of traditional uh, way of uh, livelihood. And now they've been sort of, you know, uh, absorbed into the forest department. Parvati Borwa is also known as the elephant queen. Yeah. You can... So Google just her. Google her, Elephant Queen. Yeah, so that, that was one way. Uh, the milkmen who come to the island to pick up milk, we discovered that they, this year, because of the extreme weather conditions, had a huge problem with heat. So uh, that is another way to distribute funds. That's the only reason I'm taking you through this slide because I saw it on the Excel sheet. We got them decathlon caps uh, to prevent heat stroke. Uh, the reason we've got them these sort of caps is because they wear their towels in a certain way. So we know that if we just got them caps, they, chances are they'll probably throw it because they're not used to just having that cap. So of course, this also protects them from more heat. So it works out for us and it works out for them. But we got all of them caps. So now they're all uh, traipsing around the jungle on cycles with uh, several of these caps to avoid heat stroke. The gentleman on the right is Dan Bahadur, who is now part of the core team of the River Project. Through the course of the past one year, we realized that his knowledge on the landscape from Arunachal, uh, as the three rivers enter Assam in, uh, from Arunachal, is extensive because he's because he's a no semi nomadic pastoralist. He's traveled through all those jungles, so he's uh, a river systems advisor for us now for the Debang, Siang, and the Luwit. Apart from that, uh, because his senses are really keen and heightened, we have discovered that he. He can record sound really, really well because he has the ability to sit still. He can hear sounds that we do not. He is also really keen on recording sound. And uh, because the Zoom recorder doesn't, you know, you, it, it, their faders and stuff like that, this problem that he has about not being able to read it or to be able to explain to him how ISO or shutter speed works, which is a problem, uh, sound is relatively easier. So he's been traveling up and down with us, uh, recording sounds for us by the river and the jungle. So that is another uh, collaboration. And all of that has evolved into the River Project, which is an extension of the same idea that Morisika and the episodes had. We are now working in bits and pieces of Arunachal. Uh, we are working in Sikkim. Uh, the River Project essentially does it has the same approach to storytelling and build, uh, extends the online archive to the rivers of the Northeast. That is the idea. Um, and these are the co-creators. Uh, co-team members, Orgadi Barwa, who is the gentleman on the extreme right, is from the Gauripur uh, community. Uh, he's an artist and a musician. Uh, Dhan Bahadur Pradhan is the River Systems Advisor and the sound recordist now for us. Jeevda, who, who is an expert on the Brahmaputra River, has very generously offered to mentor us. Uh, so this is the co-team. Uh, and this is essentially what the River Project will do. Uh, which is everything that we've talked about in uh, the past uh, few slides. It's the same thing, but extended to the different rivers of the Northeast through storytelling. That's about it. So uh, we'll take questions now, if you have any. Stop it. Yeah. Thanks, Vandana. Thanks, Devishish. That was truly insightful. Um, there are a couple of questions in the chat, but in the meantime, if people want to unmute and say something or ask any questions, please feel free. I think there's a question on when does the website go live? 
Yeah, okay. So the website is live. There is a soft launch. Uh, so it is up and running. Uh, it's called the River Project. But we can't app. see. I think it says, still says coming, coming soon, coming. though. Oh, it's coming soon. So, okay. So, sorry. So, because we were doing the presentation, we kind of took it down so that there wouldn't be any crashes. But the website is live. We've done a soft launch. We're publicizing it only. Uh, come. So, by this evening, you can go back in and you can take a look. Yeah. Uh, we do a hard launch in Facebook with the community members. Anything else? I think uh, Anita had a question on do you on how did you interact with farmers at the river bank? How are they dealing with floods and receding river? And also on whether the community, how will the community visualize the online archive? Do they have the capacity to do it? Yeah. So the online archive, uh, a lot of what happened is the ar archive was slated to actually launch a lot earlier. But the reason it's taken so long is we went back. We constantly went back with the design of the archive um, and showed the community the archive and said, this is what it looks like. So interestingly, none of them, most of them don't know how to work a website, but they know how to work apps if they have a smartphone, because all the um, all the things that they sort of engage with are on apps, like there's the YouTube app. Uh, some of them have Facebook Live. News is an app. All of these things are on apps. So what we have done is even within the website, uh, the online version, uh, we have made sure that the design is based on going back to the community constantly saying, okay, if you were navigating this web page, how would you? Navigate it. So, for example, we don't have a back button. We just have a cl cross to close the pop up because that is something that the community can relate to. The entire website has icons. Um, icons, again, as we discovered, which I was telling Sahana also a while ago, they are not use universal. Mm -hmm. They they don't have universal meanings. What we have, uh, yeah. I mean, we might think that uh, emoticon for something, but for them it means something very different. So uh, there is that slight problem. Uh, so we had to constantly go back and work with text messages to say, what does this mean for you? And what does this mean for you? Uh, so the website is as friendly as possible, looking at uh, trying to understand that there are a lot of people who, even if they're literate, might not be able to, might not be digitally savvy enough to be able to navigate the website. The app is completely based on uh, all the beta testing we did in the field. Um, so that they inform how the app, app functions because applications are something that they all know. And we try to keep it very simple. Yeah. So yeah, we have a question. We have a reason. You could go ahead. Um, I am really interested to know because uh, since this movie was shot in Assam and like again, we are talking about a lot of local farmers, local people. Uh, and you're talking about like how you developed an app and like then you sort of talk about it. So uh, how do you influence like the farmers and like the local people to use the website or the tool that you created again, right? So I just want to understand that. We don't have to influence them. It's their own stories. So they're really excited about downloading the app and watching themselves on the internet and uh, listening to their stories and listening to other people's um, stories. And like I said, storytelling is a really powerful tool. It is also a theme that they all understand because a lot of it is passed down orally. Um, so when we say, hey, uh, this is an app, you just need to be able to download it. We'll download it and install it for you for now. And you work it. Uh, the Even while beta testing it, the responses that we've gotten back are, have been incredible. Like they've gone and showed it in their villages and said, um, you know, look at this. They've in fact gone and showed them like the back end of the website because they had access to the back end of the website because we wanted them to give us their design inputs. Uh, they've gone, even though they don't know how to type the website because they have the link in their WhatsApp chat, they would uh, sort of go back and show it to their community members. And then someone else would say, oh, hey, there's this other story that you should record. Um, so one of the things that we've real realized is that we've tapped into and because all these things are slowly disappearing, and there is this massive sense of loss that we're all feeling. The need to want to document their own stories and their own voices is very, very strong. So um, we don't have to say anything. Uh, we show them the app and then they're, ha they, they, they're happy. And then that follows through with a three hour long conversation about the things that they remember and how the reverse changed and how the landscape has changed. Thank you. That, that, yeah, that gives a lot of insight. Thank you so much. Um, 
Thank you for all the lovely compliments. Okay. Any other questions? Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Chiku. Yeah. All right. So, do you, we can share your details. I think we can give the River Project a website link over here. And yeah. if there is anything else that people want to um, directly reach out to you, if you could put in your details here. Uh, but otherwise, thank you so much. I think, you know, the thoughtfulness that has gone into how you have been engaging with the community, living with the community, the slow process of assimilating knowledge and then kind of thinking through it is really wonderful. Um, so would love, <laughs> I think there are some. Well, the evening music sessions are actually in the music theme. Uh, we will put the website up again <laughs> this evening so you guys can go in there and listen to it. Or you could just come to Assam and we'll take you to Gauripur. That is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So on that lovely uh, invitation note, thank you so much, Debashish and Vandana. Thanks everyone for joining us today and uh, do keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Sahana, for having us. <laughs>